Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, a 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem can be found in the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson five of the physics one module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. All right, so one of the most helpful things you can do with a problem like this is draw a picture. I thought it would be fun to put this picture of Superman in here, and so I know the superhero is supposed to be pushing against the train. It looks like he's pulling, but you just have to bear with me. We'll pretend that he's pushing in this picture. Now, you don't have to draw a picture as complicated as this, of course. You can just start with a dot. That's the object the forces are working on. And then you're going to want to draw all the forces involved. So this is our train here. We know definitely we have the force of gravity that's pushing the train down right? Just like everything else. And also just like everything else, we have a normal force that's pushing back up from the ground on the train. Otherwise, the train would just keep falling right through the ground. So we have that normal force pushing back up. And since the train's not going up or down, it's not accelerating in either direction, we can assume these forces are canceling out. The train is definitely moving forward, or in this case, to the right. And we know that that is obviously a catastrophic situation. But I don't know of any force that's actively making the train move that way at that moment. It's already been acted on and the train is now just in motion. Let's go ahead and look at what we have going on here. We have Superman pushing in this direction, absolutely slowing down the train. Is there anything else that could be slowing down the train? Friction. So we've got our Superman force and we've got our friction force. Both of those are going to be important and we want to make sure we consider both of those. This is why it's helpful to draw out all the forces to make sure that you don't forget anything. I'm going to go ahead and label these. This can be gravitational. We'll call this normal. The next thing that I really like to do is go ahead and look at the problem, see what values I know and what values I'm trying to figure out. That will help me know what equations I should use. All right, looking at all the numbers here, it looks like we know, first of all, we know the mass of the train. Okay, that's good to know. We know the coefficient of kinetic friction for the train. Perfect. We know the current speed of the train. And we also know how long in terms of distance, so how much distance the train covers before the superhero is able to stop it completely. So these are good values to know. That helps us figure out what equations we need to use. And let's start plugging in these numbers and working with what we have. Now, I've taken these screenshots of this work to spare you from my handwriting. We're going to start with kinetic energy because what we're trying to figure out is how much work the superhero did to stop the train. And we know that work can also be defined as change in kinetic energy. So if we can figure out how much kinetic energy the train started with versus how much it ended with, that can give us an idea of how much work was done from start to finish. Obviously, the train ended at zero. And so if we just take the start and figure out what we started at, we'll know what that change was because we know it goes all the way down to zero in terms of kinetic energy because at the end, it's not moving. So we take our classic kinetic energy equation, one half mass velocity squared. Another thing that could have helped me figure out to use this equation is I have everything I need from the question for it. So if I take my mass of my train, I plug in my velocity, and I crunch those numbers, I'll go ahead and get the kinetic energy in joules. Remember, joules is kilograms meter squared over second squared, and that's what we have here. So this is the total change in kinetic energy of the train from start to finish. Now let's see what we can do with that. We're getting a lot warmer, a lot closer to what we want, which is how much work the superhero did to stop the train. But remember, there's another force that's also working to slow down this train. It's not just the superhero. He didn't do all the work by himself. And that force, like we talked about, is friction. So we need to go ahead and figure out what the frictional force is that's acting on this train. And that allows us to figure out how much work friction did, friction did as opposed to the superhero. We have this equation here that allows us to figure out the kinetic frictional force, which is that force that's acting on the train. And that's made up of this coefficient here, which we have, which is great, and also the normal force, which we don't have. So that might be tricky. But we know that normal force is equal to the force of gravity. Remember, we talked about that. Those things are canceling out. That's why the train's not falling up or down. And we know that the force of gravity is equal to the mass of an object times the gravitational acceleration, which is always about 10 meters per second squared. So we plug those values in, the coefficient, the mass of the train, and g here, because we're just plugging in mg for normal force. We crunch those numbers, and we find out that the frictional force is about 40,000 newtons. Remember that with MCAT math, you absolutely can and should round. It'll make your life easier. Well, now that we know the frictional force, how can we figure out how much work is being done by that frictional force? Of course, we have the classic equation, 
work equals force times distance. We know the distance that the train traveled from start to finish before it stopped. We can plug that in here along with that frictional force that we just calculated, and that will get us the work that's done. And remember, when in doubt, you can check your units. We know that newtons are kilograms meters over second squared. So if we multiply that by meters, we have kilogram meters squared over second squared, which is joules. So that's another trick that you can use that's up your sleeve. Finally, what we can do is we can take that work, that total work that was done to stop the train, which we figured out, subtract the work done by friction, and that will leave us with the work done by the superhero. We're very grateful for his service. But one last thing we need to remember, this work is being done in the opposite direction that's the train's moving. And so because that work is being done to slow down the train, that's going to be negative. The work being done here is a negative value. It's pushing the train in the backwards direction. And so that work is going to be negative 840,000 joules. Let's go ahead and check our answer over here on the next, on the question. Perfect. Spot on. Here's an explanation to help you out if you want to review that. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATselfprep.com. Now, if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with one of our elite tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. We look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time. Have a good one and check out this bottom bit of the explanation down here. See ya.